Now, he entered the Guinness Book of Records as the most isolated human being in history, orbiting the dark side of the moon alone in his Apollo 15 command module. His fellow astronauts were 3,000 kilometres away on the lunar surface. Well, in just a moment or two, I'll speak to our warden and hear his extraordinary story. But first, let's get a quick reminder of that mission. Launch command. Lift off. We have lift off at 9.34 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. The tower is clear. And we have a roll program. Roger. Wonders of the unknown at Hadley. I try to realize there's a fundamental truth to our nature. Man must explore. This is really a rock and roll ride, isn't it? Never been on a ride like this before. Oh, boy. Boy, that's a big mountain when you're down here looking up, isn't it? My, oh, my. Well, I'm delighted to say that our warden joins me here in the Global Studios in this, as I was saying earlier, World Space Week. Uh, our welcome here to Thank the program. Thank Lovely you, Matthew. Lovely to see the glimpse there of... Pleasure to be here. Do you ever feel that command module pilots uh, get overlooked by history and actually all the attention on all of that on the lunar surface? I can't tell you how many times that question's been asked, and I can't tell you how many times people get it wrong. Um, there are 12 guys who walked on the moon six guys who went into orbit. So we're a much smaller group than the guys who walked on the moon. Um, the truth of the matter is that what we see of the guys that walk on the moon is a media kind of event. Uh, back in the day, uh, from a professional standpoint, um, I was the second in command on the flight, and I could have been in, uh, assigned to a commander's uh, position in a, in a future flight, if they hadn't canceled the program, of course. Um, lunar module pilots don't get that opportunity because they never really fly anything. So uh, there's a difference in perception of what I, I this is all about. I read you cheaply say, yeah. those guys, they're just picking up rocks well, from the Well, all they do, the they lunar. just go down and collect rocks. <laughs> You're I mean, doing the science. Yeah, I did that when I was a kid. I could go out in a parking lot and pick up rocks. That's easy. <laughs> what was it like that moment when uh, the landing module left you and you just saw it getting smaller and smaller? Just give me an idea of what that was like as a, as a human being, just left there on your own? Well, the first thought is we undock successfully. They're okay. Everything's working. They're going to go down. Good luck, guys. The next thought is I'm so glad to get rid of those guys for a while. <laughs> That's fun. Now I got it all to myself. You said you also uh, hated all the chatter from, from Houston and from oh, Mission yeah. Control, but uh, tell me how lonely, how isolated was it up there? I mean, you're a quarter of a million miles from home. Right. You're 3,000 miles from those colleagues who there gone onto the, mm -hmm. the, the lunar surface. What is all of that like? Well, there's a difference between lonely and alone. I was alone, but not lonely. Uh, and I think a lot of that had to do with my, with my training, my background, uh, my flying in, in single-seat fighter airplanes where you're on your own all the time. Uh, and I learned most of that over here when I went through the Empire Test Pilot School at Farnborough. Um, and, of course, and so, you're busy. I mean, you are doing... Oh yeah. oh, you were doing busy. so much mapping and photography well, of the lunar surface, weren't mapping, you? Mapping, I did remote sensing of the surface, I did low-light level photography, I did visual observation. What percentage I of the moon did you actually photograph? 25%. We photographed both in high resolution and we had a very complicated uh, mapping camera that had a laser altimeter that recorded the exact altitude above the middle of the picture. So, so that's a massive amount of data that oh, eventually huge amount of data. came back. Oh, we got a thousand times more data from orbit than we did on the surface, yeah. Tell me, because a lot of astronauts, when you hear them talking, talk about the moment when they actually could see Earth. Mm -hmm. Those images well, being that's, quite unlike anything they imagined. What, what was that that's, moment like for you? That's probably, that's the most incredible part of the flight. I went around the moon 75 times. Every time I came around the side of the moon and the Earth came into view, no matter what I was doing, I got to a window and watched the Earth rise. Uh, it's an incredible sight. It's the only thing in the solar system that has the colored uh, surface that we have here on Earth. Uh, it's kind of interesting that from far away, the Earth is almost white because even water vapor reflects sunlight and looks white. So even if we're looking through the atmosphere and we see clouds, the, the spaces in between the clouds, we see blue sky. But if you're looking from the other way down, 
That could be all white too. So it's uh, it, it's a pretty. Uh, white I read you were struck by just the uh, the amount of stars. Now you did. I said mm -hmm. that in the introduction a little <coughs> earlier that you did the first deep space walk. I uh, did. Just before you tell me about that, I just want to show viewers uh, and remind them what that was actually like. We have uh, some commentary from NASA from that moment. Al Warden left the spacecraft to retrieve the 8,000 feet of film contained in the cassettes of the Experiment Bay cameras. Later, they would turn their X-ray spectrometer toward the newly discovered X-ray pulsars, those mysterious black holes in space. So there you are. I mean, well, uh, what was that like? I mean, what are the, the, the obvious dangers? Uh, I didn't think so. Um, we had practiced that so much that when I actually did it for real, uh, it was, I could I could kind of cheat myself into thinking it was back in practice again. <laughs> Actually, I, I, I never really got uh, very excited or concerned about that. Uh, everything was working fine. My suit was holding pressure. I had an umbilical cord with all the stuff I needed. Um, I walked hand over hand to the back of the service module, pick up the film cassettes to bring them back. And that was the whole purpose of the spacewalk. And this was such a rich scientific trip, wasn't it? I Correct. mean, you had uh, the rover. I love the pictures of, there was an experiment done on the lunar surface, which uh, was I supposed to show the lack of gravity oh, with a feather and a the hammer. Feather and a hammer. Oh, I yeah. mean, uh, you, you were doing so much. And, and that's interesting because we've seen with recent missions uh, into space that right. uh, with the hookups with schools and science, just to try to get people interested in all of Correct. the science that's Involved. Correct. Well, the science back then was a little different because the science was uh, completely involved with exploring something, exploring a body where we'd never been before. Uh, the science we do today from the International Space Station is a little different because it's all confined into a can that's floating around the Earth. Uh, uh, on the moon, though, it's wide open. I mean, it's like going out to Arizona and trying to figure out what caused all the mountains out there. It made me smile when I read that uh, you said uh, you shouldn't get too close to other crew members. It's What's true. your advice? Because it was talk about going back to the moon, talk about going to Mars. What can be learned from your trip for future astronauts, do you think? Well, I'm not sure because we're, we're, it's going to be an entirely different thing. You can put up with anything for two weeks. A year and a half, I don't know. I think there's, there's going to have to be some soul searching. Uh, I think the human part of, the, of a trip to Mars is going to be the most important thing that we've got to resolve. Uh, not just in terms of food and how you survive for a year and a half, but how a crew interacts with each other for a year and a half. And That's just briefly, going to be very it's important. such an exciting time. You've got NASA mm -hmm. talking about it, you've got private enterprises, you've got India right. gate crashing the whole space party. It's an extraordinary India, time. India, China, they're, 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 they're doing very, very well. And, uh, and of course, in the States, we have lots of commercial operators now SpaceX, Blue Origin, Sierra Nevada, Boeing, they're all going to do something commercially in space, which is going to really push us forward, I think. Just one sentence, because you didn't get to leave a footprint on the moon. Does that bother you at all? No, not at all, not at all. Uh, my mark is other places uh, in terms of the science that we did, uh, and I'm very happy with that. I wouldn't. Thanks very much. My uh, pleasure, Matthew. in just a moment, because uh, 